Yeah. What a night, eh, Francie? And in the middle of the week, too. That's Maxie. No beginning, no end, and no middle. What a night, Mr. Hiya, champ. <laughs> hiya, hiya, hiya. Gosh, I'm sorry. Hiya, hi, boy. How are you? Say, it looks like the world's treating you all right tonight. Oh, no. The English in reverse. Tonight I'm treating the world. What's cooking? Open the lid and look in the pot. <laughs> Bye. Well, Uffy! Hello, Maxie. Well, give it a night count and ring the bell if you ain't voluptuous as ever. You didn't think I'd fail you on a night like this. I'm flattered. Flattered than I was when I fought. Well, never mind. We'll forget about that fight. I saw that fight. Don't tell me, don't tell me. On the floor, I look good, huh, Betsy? Here tonight looks like Saturday night. You mean charity night. This is all on Maxie. He had me call all of his friends, the newspaper men, and especially you. Oh, so your call was official all the time. I thought it was personal, like from you to me. Now, don't change the subject, Typo. This is a big night for Maxie. He's getting a college prize. College prize? For what? That's your question. All right, don't answer me till you feel like it. What a close-mouthed mama you are. I don't know what Maxie'd do if you weren't fronting for him. I do. What? He'd fall on his ear and go broke. <laughs> Probably. Hi, Hypo. You look in the pot for some stew, huh? Well, in a way. Be doing tonight. Sure is. Got me a new suit and everything. <laughs> you know, for a roughneck like you, that suit does fit pretty good. It should fit ahead of me by those three Roman tailors. Roman tailors? Yeah, Codus, Festus, and Panthers. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm gonna let you get away with that, because when a dog bites a man, that ain't news. But when a newspaper man slugs a fighter, <laughs> that's news. <laughs> Say, Max, you all kidding aside, what are those college boys doing here? Oh, have they a ribbon? Then what are we waiting for? Come on, I want you to meet the boys. Okay. Excuse me, Francie. I'll be back in a flash for a mash. Have a good time. Hiya, fellas. Hello, Max. This is Hyper McGonagall sporting editor of the Tribune. Hi, how do you do? This is Mr. Carey, newspaper man, too. Ain't you? Uh -huh. He and his pals are the ones to give me this Pulitzer Prize tonight. Oh. <laughs> you know the girls already, don't you? Oh, sure. Hiya, Betsy. Come to think of it, you kids should be backstage, darling, up for the floor show. Max, you have a heart. We just met the girls. So what? You'll see more of the girls later on. Wait till you see their costumes. Well, a big shot turned out here tonight, kid. Maybe I ought to shake hands with him, huh? Anyhow, I left poor Uffy holding the bag. So, hi, Bo. You carry on with my friends, and I'll just carry on. <laughs> Where are you boys from? Uh, Harvard. With the Lampoon. I'm the editor, and Oh, the Lampoon, eh? That's sort of a comic magazine, isn't it? Well, you can call it that if you like, but then it has done some constructive work. Uh-huh. What are you boys doing for Maxie here tonight? Something constructive or destructive? Well, now, Mr. McGonagall, really, you should know better than to try to milk another newspaper man for your news. So what goes on, Maxie, and when does it happen? Any minute now. My name would be like a toothpick in everybody's mouth. come up here with me. Each year, the Harvard Lampoon chooses outstanding individuals in various fields for awards of merit. Ordinarily, the task of selecting who is going to be so honored is a difficult one, but this year, our choice was easy. Maxie here was far and away the outstanding candidate. Is it wonderful? Are you sure he's talking about Maxie? For your accomplishments in the field of nightclub entertainment, as a boxer, as uh, an actor, you, Maxie Rosenblum, have been selected by the Harvard Lampoon as the recipient of its annual award for supreme pediculousness. Okay. 
was that word he used? I can't call off the word, but the size of it's good enough for me. I told you once, Maxie, and I'll tell you again, it's no good. I don't like it, I don't like it, and I still don't like it. Don't be that way, Fancy. Maybe the paper's made of misgrammar. You know, a graphotypical error. It's no dice, Maxie. One paper might make six mistakes, but six papers don't make the same mistake. Here, yeah, this is the biggest diction thing I could find. Thanks. I wonder why they did that. Ridiculous. Here it is. Come on, what does this say? What does it mean? Ridiculous. Putrid. Putrid. Now we're getting places. Now look up the word putrid and see how it ties in with Peritula. That's the prize they said I was getting. You know, like the movie stars get every year? No, Maxie, that's the Pulitzer Prize. Here it is, putrid. Rotten. Hey, that stinks. Now you're getting places. You took the words right out of the dictionary's mouth. And to think those college guys cost me six bottles of Coke. Why, the dirty little engraves. Sort of things out, I hate them. Hiya, Chap. Hiya, Sugar. What are you doing with that good news? Good news, my eye, and don't sugar me. You're like all the rest of the smart Alex, making a fool out of a right guy. Anything for a laugh. Well, it ain't funny, McGonagall. That's what I like about you, sugar. You're gonna make me a wonderful wife. You're dynamite, full of fire. Just the kind of a girl for a newspaper man. Newspaper man? You're all vultures. <laughs> what a home I'm gonna have. Not a whole pane of glass in the entire house. And the little woman standing there, just waiting for me. With a rolling pin at one end, a baseball bat in the other. Oh, fly a kite. Keep your tempo down, Francie. Hypo's okay. He has to keep up with the rest of the papers to hold his job, don't he? Thanks, champ. Francie understands how it is. It's just she's all for you, aren't you, sugar? Now, look, we gotta be bigger than those rah-rah boys. We gotta take it like we dish it out. Anyway, those boys are just kids. So they had a little fun with me. So what? Now, go back to work. Hi, Paul. I wanna talk to you. You're a great champ, Maxie. <laughs> Make it chump and it's a deal. Look, I bet you think I'm pretty dumb, huh? Oh, now forget it. You mean those newspaper articles? That's good publicity. Keep your name alive. Makes people like you. I know I ain't so smart, or, or I would have called onto the rib in the first place. Well, there's only one cure for all this. I gotta get smartened up. Oh, stop it, Maxie. You're smart enough. You're normal. You're natural. People love you the way you are. And the place to get smart is college. That's what I'm gonna do. Go to college. Harvard. That's where I'm going. Harvard. Look, Maxie, no college is going to take you, Harvard or any other college. It's impossible. Why? You've got to have credits. Well, I don't want no credits. I'll pay cash on the line. No, I mean scholastic credits. Harvard won't accept anybody unless they languages. Look, what you're saying don't make sense. If a guy already knows them big words, he don't need to go to college. Any dope can understand that. Now, look, Maxie, I'll try to explain it. Maybe you're right, Harvard, but, but, but when a guy's so dumb that he gets prizes for it, then that's a new kind of low, ain't it? I think Hypo's right this time, Maxie. Now look, kids, you know as well as I do that I made an awful lot of dough by getting my brains knocked out. Even I know that. Now, doesn't it make sense that I can make a lot more dough by getting some brains knocked into me? Oh, but Maxie... And what could be a better place than college? And the better the college, the better. And what could be a better college than Harvard? Genuinely mad, send him to the psychology laboratory for observation. He won't go. He's very forward. Keeps calling me toots and sweetheart. Hmm? He must be mad. What sort of person is he? Definitely the troglodyte. But definitely. Really? What's his cranial index? Very bad. And you should see his ears. Oh! Miss Frisbee. My research cannot have too many case histories for observation. Send him in. Send him in at once. You, young man, you may come in. Thanks, teacher. Oh. Remind me to bring a red apple at recess. Oh. What a spot for a nightclub. Are you the head man?
Beautiful, beautiful. Not bad, but a little corny. Look, Grandpa, when they get down to real cases, you in the world painting yourself. I was referring to the cartilaginous excrescences of your auricular lobo protuberances. And now, young man, do you mind stepping a little closer? Oh, I need glasses, huh? It has nothing to do with your optical efficiency, nor your personal pulchritude, which is conspicuously negative. Now we're getting places, Gramps. Come on, throw some more big words at me, huh? Words like stamina, stadium, or sidewalk. Hey, a sidewalk, one word or two words? Uh, should we postpone the grammar quiz till later? Yes, you are more important. Now, hold still while I measure your cranial index. Them big words. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what I want to learn. What will it charge me to take lessons from you direct? I don't teach. I'm still learning myself. Now, hold still. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I know the feeling. Punchy. Well, I must call Professor Anthony to verify my observations. Uh, uh, sit down, young man. Just make yourself comfortable. Oh, Anthony. I have a live specimen here in my office. His cranial index fits exactly between the heart and top and the Neanderthal man. That's precisely the index we calculated for the missing link. Friends of yours? Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, hurry. You must see him before he gets away. Look, Doc, we're getting no place fast. The best I can savvy from your lingo is that I'm a character. Okay, I own up to that. But that's what I'm here for, to get smartened up. Smartened up? Yeah. You see, I just got wise to myself. I figured there's no percentage of being dumb, so I thought I'd take me a course in sprouts. You know, let you blast a little sensor to my noggin. Oh, Professor Anthony. Uh, he speaks a strange jargon composed of English derivatives, but which otherwise makes no sense. Uh, better get Professor McSquiggly in here at once. Make him talk. Oh, it's simple. Just ask him simple questions. Uh, hello, Miss Squiggly. Come right over to Professor Alvin's department immediately. It's very urgent. Is he a main quack? I told her before I want to connect with the mug that's going to take me out of that particulars class. Particulars? Ridiculous. Young man, do you know what that word particulars means? Brother, I don't mean fragrance or roses. Now, gentlemen, you may begin your tests. Everybody ready? Quite. Recorder ready? Right now, hold your arms out. Now close your eyes. Uh, hey, Squig, cut that out, that pickles. Quiet, please. Uh, Miss Frisbee, will you please record our findings as we report them? I got bit, huh? Now raise your right foot and your left arm, please. Now your left foot and your right arm, please. Now on your left, now on your right. Now left, left, yeah, right, right, right. No, uh, I said right. What's the difference? Do I get educated in my feet? Now close your right eye, please. Now open your right eye and close your left. Now close both your eyes and open your mouth. Now open your eyes and close your mouth. Now breathe in. Now out. In. Out. Out. Now repeat after me. You've been eating raw meat. Now then, close your mouth. Say, ah. Mm. One of us is off the beam. Now, uh, put your hand on your abdomen. Huh? On your abdomen, your abdomen. Oh, you're a spa, huh? Now stand on your right foot and place your hand on your abdomen. Your abdomen. Anthony means for you to place your hand on your abdomen, like this. Oh, the bread basket. Oh, say, that feels good. Let me do it to you. Oh! Gee, she's sensitive. What's your opinion, gentlemen? I would say he's a perfect throwback to the caveman. His IQ is definitely that of a moron. Hey, Doc, what do you think I am, a tightrope walker? He's a perfect moron. Yeah, I'm more on this foot than I'm on the other. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. You may relax now. Please sit down. How am I doing, Graham? Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I'm taking that out. <laughs> this is a windfall. A perfect windfall for antediluvian research. Just think to be able to study the actions and reactions of a physical type that's supposed to have vanished from the Earth hundreds of centuries ago. 
Hey, here's my home in the Bronx. How can we hold him? How can we keep him here under observation? Well, obviously, he's not the type you can put in a cage. Oh, he's not the dangerous type. In fact, he blossoms on freedom. We let him blossom till he blooms. As soon as other universities hear of this specimen, they'll want it too. Oh, but we must keep him here for our own use exclusively. I'll make a proposition to him. See if it can be arranged. Splendid. Uh, Mr. Rosenblum. Oh, cut out that, Mr. Stockton. Just call me champ, Gramp. Oh, very well, champ. Uh, now, I, uh, or uh, that is, we would like to know if you would be interested in living with us here at Harvard for a year or so. A year? Nothing doing. I told him to do a stretch at Harvard, it's for four years. And I don't want nothing off of good behavior. Well, of course, we'd be glad to keep you for the full term, but then there's the little matter of finance. Oh, why not make a yearly arrangement at first, Mr. Rosenblum? Now, how much would you want for your services for the first year? Huh? Would you be willing to accept a thousand dollars? thousand dollars? Well, uh, supposing we give you fifteen hundred and your room and board, will you accept? Well, we, we need, need men, men like you, Mr. Rosenblum. Rosenblum. And I need men like you. In fact, I'm starting to feel smart already. Doc, you got a deal. That's fine, Maxie, that's fine. Now, all you have to do is to make yourself available to us for a few hours daily. Well, just call me my service to bid your disapproval. That makes me very happy. That makes me a freshman, don't it? Well, I suppose you could call your said come. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening sir. Please sit down. Hello. Mr. Rosenblum? That's right, in the flesh. I'm John Edward Hayworth, the housemaster. Oh, yeah. Won't you join us? Thank you. Uh, this is your place over here. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Rosenblum. He's going to be with us here at Ransom House. Hi, fellas. Hello. Hello. Cut out that Mr. Stuff. Just call me Maxie. This is your roommate. I don't think you've met yet. Eddie Spellman, meet Maxie Rosenblum. Oh, hi. Hi, Eddie. And this is Mr. Don't bother to introduce me around. I can't remember names anyhow. All I can say is, pleased to meet you, and I know we'll get to like each other, and I hope to mutual satisfaction. Say, I'm kind of out of step here, and I used to be glad to examine. Well, we try to be as informal as possible here. Yeah, it sort of makes me feel like a head waiter. That shows you how wrong I could be. I sort of figured you college guys was the sense to dress yourselves up when you put on the feed bag. You know, like the sports you read about, the ones that put on the boil shirts in the jungle? Maybe I better go back upstairs and climb out of the soup and fish and put on something less formable, huh? Oh, don't bother, Maxie. As a matter of fact, we are complimented, aren't we? Why, well, sure we are. Okay, if you say so. I want to get to know all you fellows real well, because there's lots of things I want to ask you. But when the food comes in better, the question is out. Oh, boy, oysters still with oysters in it. Say, pal, if I ain't too incognito, will you pass me the salt, please? Spicy is a variety of life. Now, don't get it too spicy. There are oceans of oysters in that stew. Yeah, and oceans of oceans, too. No oh, d'oeuvres. No oh, d'oeuvres. And that's the way I figured the whole thing out. If Collins had made gentlemen out of that lampoon bunch, boy, I ought to come out a genius. And a gentleman. Uh, being a gentleman isn't just a matter of college, Maxie. I've known doctors of philosophy who were first-class heels, and one of the finest gentlemen I ever knew couldn't read or write. Yeah, I knew that guy. He had a terrific right cross. <laughs> well, this was a different <laughs> fellow. But being a gentleman is nothing in the world but being a right guy. This isn't just a gag, a publicity stunt, is it? You're really going to be here? That's right, kid. I signed a contract. It's a deal. Why? Why? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm just a vulture for culture. <laughs> well, fellas, our days of running away from upperclassmen are over. How do you mean? Well, with Maxie here, crossing the campus will be like traveling in convoy. The sophomores won't dare touch us. What do you really want to learn, Maxie? Big words, my friend. Words I can use on the old gang back home. Boy, will I panic him. Come on, teach me one now, will you? Just one. You name it and I'll earn it. Honorific abilitude in a tatibus. How long has he been fighting? <laughs> what a word. What does it mean? Well, it means being a square shooter. When you learn that, I'm going to ask for a raise. Hey, is that a crack? Yes. Well, all right. Now, let's get together on this, Maxie. First, my idea is that we should start and stay on the basis of friendship. 
Second, let's uncover the truth on both sides. We can take it. I hope you can. So we grant that you've got a contract. But you didn't come here for real knowledge, Maxie. You came here first because you couldn't take a joke. Now, wait a minute. That's no way to start off a no-good friendship. That harpoon gag that was pulled on me, well, that was okay, see, but being meat for them kind of gags is something else again, if you get what I mean. And you're staying here because you want to learn how to give your friends a mental hot foot. Isn't that right? Oh, I don't have to answer. Oh, take down your guard, Maxie. If we're going to get along together, we've got to be on the up and up about everything. A teacher is something like a manager in the fight game. I've got to know exactly what's wrong with you to set it right and what's right with you to make it better. All it adds up to is helping you to get where you want to go. You mean you'll help me to be anything I want? Within human limits, yes. Now we're getting places. So how long will it be before I can granulate into the sorority or one of them infirmaries? Oh, I think we can manage that, can't we, boys? I'll propose you for membership for one of the clubs at once. See, that's swell. And when I get one of them buttons, you know, with them Latin hydraulics on it? And you'll get everything. Then what's my next move? Do I join a sorority? <laughs> Maxie, a sorority is a club for girls. There I go, pulling a rose and bloomer again. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? How's this one, John? Is all right? Hey, Maxie. Come on, Maxie. You have to be ready by 7.30 sharp. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. I'm finally getting to one of them infirmaries. Give me a mirror, somebody, will you? If I look anything like you guys, that's all, brother. No, don't let him see himself. I think he's a glamour girl. Well, oh, Maxie. Hi, Bo. What are you doing here? A million guesses and you'd still be wrong. See, what kind of a course are you taking? Nursery rhymes? Oh, you mean this? Oh, no, I'm being initiated into a club. You know, part of my higher education. <laughs> fellas, this is Hypo Mechanical, sporting editor of the Tribune. Hi, fellas. Hi. You hope they get disturbed by me going to college, huh? <laughs> Not me. I'm moving in. I'm going to stay here. But I thought you already went to college. Besides what? Oh, I got a year's leave of absence. I'm here under the Neiman Fellowship. Oh, is that good? <laughs> Very. <laughs> what is it? Oh, it's an endowment for newspaper men. Gives us a year off to go back to college and specialize. I'm going to study political economy. They know such thing. <laughs> well, they're still giving courses in it. <laughs> Gee, that's well. Then you're getting in free too, like me. Huh? Look at those guys. They had a pay to come in. Not me. I'm getting room and board and 1,500 bucks to boot. And all the instructions I want. My boy, am I slaying them. Have you learned anything yet? Have I? Get this. I'm a refugee of Boy, that's some word. Word, that's the whole dictionary. All right, you candidates. Everybody ready? Uh, yes, sir. Come on, Maxie, hurry up. You remember him, the harpoon editor? Sometimes I can figure him out. You remember Hypo, sporting editor of the Tribune? He and his lampooners are the one I pulled that pedigree gag, you know, that pedigree. Uh, uh, ridiculous, and it was no gag. Are you running the shinding tonight? At my special request. Now, come on, get over there with the other fellas. I can't wait. Well, we get through with you, you may wish you had. Gee, how I hate that guy. I wish you had a brother so I could hate him, too. All right, fellas, let's go. Come on, everybody. Do you mind if I train along? Oh, it'd be an added pleasure. Come on. Me too. You too. For sure? Uh-huh. All right, but don't forget I, I got a glass chin. Ooh! 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 Hey, that's a foul! <laughs> Forward, men! On to Bunker Hill! <laughs> Some dog you got there, mister. You ain't got two bad ones yourself, brother. Come on, get going, Cinderella. You're blocking traffic. <laughs> come on, get going now. All right, come on. Come on, come on. And quit stalling. Use your hands. Come on, Maxie. Come on, Maxie. Get going. Roll. Get going. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Keep going. Up big. Oh. Me. I haven't got much on me either. <laughs> a spy, huh? What's this dame doing here? She's not with us. Then what's she got a noggin on the dog for? 
What is she imitating me for? She's from a sorority, and she's being initiated just like you are. Why, Harrison Carey, are you leading these freshies to slaughter? Mm-hmm. Just as soon as we finish turning the uh, champ into a chump, we'll be through. Look out he doesn't turn you into a chimp. Look, Switch, how about you and I cut the rug after this formality is over, huh? Gosh, you're too young for me. You'll live to regret the day you turn me down. Who's the dame? She thinks she's the whole sorority. Let's hiss her. Stop, stop, she's cute. I think she's the whole works. Look, infant, I'm Zella Phipps. Who are you? Me? Maxie, Maxie Rosenblum. Ain't you ever heard of me? Well, uh, no. But I think you're awful cute. Hey, uh, they, uh, hurt you much? Oh, you mean these? Oh, I got them from trying to listen to two radio programs at the same time. Keep going, Maxie, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Maxie? Can't you take it? What are you crying about? It ain't me that's crying. It's a cream puff. Somebody put horses radish in it. <laughs> hey, what's this I hear about Maxie Rosenblum enrolling in our school? Well, all I know is what I read in the papers. And according to them, he's a cross between a quirk and a jerk. <laughs> oh, there he is now. Oh, hi, hi, fellas. Nice knowing that you know me. Well, if it ain't the champ himself. Boy, this is a historic moment. <laughs> the first time I've ever seen the champ when he wasn't on his back. <laughs> That's because I didn't shake. <laughs> well, uh, how's the cauliflower, Maxie? Oh, I'm only bad on one ear. Why make a mountain out of a molehole? <laughs> uh, when are you going to fight Joe Lewis, Rosie? <laughs> Rosie. Rosie. Roses is red and Wallace is blue. Lilies is white and pansies woo woo. <laughs> but when Wallace is red and roses is blue is, then that's the time I will fight Joe Lewis. <coughs> Boy, you really murder the English language. Maxie, don't you know anything at all about English? I'm talking today, night. How's your grammar? Grammar? I don't know. We ain't heard from her in years. Oh, no, no, grammar. Uh, for instance, it's like as if I was to say to you, uh, consonants. Cons oh, any dope knows that. North and South America. How did I get into this? Tell me, did anyone ever take your IQ? Huh? Your IQ. 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 I IQ too. Boy, what a jerk. Well, you know what Barnum says. There's a jerk born every minute. Ah, Barnum. Barnum! The greatest believer of advertising. Oh, uh, Maxie, uh, on the side, I represent the Lonely Hearts magazine. Why, it's the finest advertising medium in the world for a guy like you. As a matter of fact, you should keep a standing ad in our magazine. Mr. Uh, uh, Blurb. Joe Blurb is the name, and I work for the widest circulated magazine. But you don't understand my setup, Mr. Blurb. I don't have to advertise. That ain't gonna do me no good. Oh, Mr. Rosenblum. Why, I'm surprised at a businessman like you saying that it doesn't pay to advertise. Why, if it wasn't for advertising, what would become of Spearman chewing gum? Or did you ever hear of, you need a biscuit? And, of course, you know, Fleischmann's East. Is he? And, uh, is he what? Is Fleischmann East? I said Fleischmann's East. That's what I said, is Fleischmann East. Uh, no, no, look. When I say Fleischmann's East, uh -huh. I don't mean Fleischmann's East. What do you mean? I mean Fleischmann's, Fleischmann's East. East. Yeah, I know. I had the same feeling sometimes. Look, I don't care if he's East or West. In fact, what am I arguing about? I don't even know the guy. Oh, wait a minute. Everybody knows what yeast is. Why, they use it in baking. Does your girl do any baking? Sure, she's always baking me to take her out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Baking, baking, like bread. Now, if your girl was baking bread, what would she stick in the dough? Her dirty hands. Her dirty... Well, skip that. Tell me, uh, what make of suspenders do you wear? Police suspenders. Police suspenders. Police suspenders. Why don't you wear fireman's suspenders? They keep your pants up, too, you know. Yeah, but who wants hot pants? I'll tell you why. Why? Because there is no nationally advertised fireman's suspenders. Why, every time you read a newspaper, look on a billboard, you see a picture of a policeman wearing police suspenders. That's advertising. That's why you buy them. Now, tell me, what kind of eggs do you eat? Mm. Why don't you eat duck eggs? Because. Because what? Did anybody ever believe that a duck egg wasn't as good as a duck egg? No, but, uh... But what? Why don't you eat duck eggs? 
because I tried it once, and what happened to a duck egg shouldn't happen to a duck. Did you ever hear a hen lay an egg? Did you say hen or ham? I said hen. Mm, yeah, I did. Ah, you bet you have, because when a duck lays an egg, she just lays it, blah. But when a hen lays an egg, ha <laughs> ha, she scratches and clucks and cackles. She advertises. Now, uh, take the automobile in its first stages. Why, the cheap little car used to be the joke of the town, while the expensive car used to zoom by quietly and unnoticed. But the cheap little car used to puff and rattle and attract attention. Now, it's the most popular car in use today. And that's what it means to advertise. I know, Mr. Blake, but... Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Professor. Good morning. And you two boys, what are you huddling about? Uh, oh, it's, uh, it's nothing, Mr. Bloomingrose. <laughs> and this young man, who is he? Mr. Bloomingrose. Yes. I'm Rose and Bloom. Our name sounds like double talk, huh? It is a coincidence. Nevertheless, rather paradoxical. Hey, that's a big word, too. That's what I'm here for, a random word. Uh, so Professor Alvin informs me. Quite so, quite so. Professor Alvin magnanimously and generously suggests that I partake in your tuition so that my vital vocabulary would situate it among your eloquence. <laughs> I, uh, I understand. You do? Yes. What I say? Uh, according to my comprehension, I gather you're eager to improve your diction. No, I, I just want to learn to speak better English. Uh, have you ever been to school at all? Yes, sir, four years. You only went as high as the fourth grade? Well, we didn't have no fourth grade, so I had to go to second grade twice. Why didn't you try to find a school that did have a fourth grade? I did, but I had to leave on account of pneumonia. Pneumonia? Pneumonia. Oh, pneumonia. Pneumonia, pneumonia. Contagious? I didn't have it. I, I just couldn't spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Mr. Rosenblum, how did you happen to hear about our school? Oh, I don't know. I think somebody reprehended it to me. Or maybe I read about it in the newspapers. Impossible. We never advertise our school in the papers. We don't believe in that sort of thing. Mr. Blumenrose, I'm surprised a smart businessman like you saying it don't pay to advertise. If it wasn't for advertisement, where would Speeman Biscuits and you need a chewing gum be today? What? First, what kind of duck eggs do you like? Mr. Rosenblum. Yes? The human anatomy happens to be so constructed that it does not lay duck eggs. Why, Daddy? Uh, oh, because. Because. Did you know that, that a duck egg wasn't duckier than a goose egg? And why? And did you know that an automobile in the early stages didn't use flight machines? What kind of suspenders do you wear? I don't wear suspenders. In case you are suspenders, what kind would they be? I don't know. You gotta know. You can't do that to me. I use a belt. You gotta use suspenders. Mr. Rosenblum, please! That's it, police suspenders. <laughs> and why police suspenders? Did you know that fireman suspenders can't bake cake as well as my girl? And why? I'll tell you why. Because you don't cackle, and you don't puff, and you don't rattle, and you don't cluck. You cluck. Mr. Rosenblum! Please, Mr. Blumus. Emma, where are you? Oh, there you are. I'm a hiding. Now, come on out, you little rascal. Come on out. Come on, Elmo. The pop gave me some homework to do, and I gotta do it. Come on, I'm not gonna dissect you like them surgeons do. All I wanna do is study a scientific analysis loss of your inner body. Come on now, Elmo. Ah, gee, you are a fine specimen. There you are. Ah. Now hold still while I make notes, Elmo. Hold still. What are you doing, Maxie? Oh, hello, fellas. The prop gave me some homework to do, and I gotta do it. Well, uh, why don't you do it at home? How can I? I live in Brooklyn. Hey, come to think of it, it's funny. They give you homework to do, and they want you to do it here. <laughs> <laughs> How are you getting along? Pretty good. Of course, you know, monotony is a very tedious subject. Monotony? Yeah, that's the study of insect bugs. And, brother, it sure is a monotony. <laughs> well, have you done any research in the textbook? Oh, I don't know nothing about taxes. Oh, yeah. Elmer's my subject. Elmer? Who is Elmer? Elmer's the mosquito that I'm experimenting on. A mosquito? Is it a foreign or a native mosquito? Mm, just a mosquito. Yeah, but where does it come from? The east or the west? For instance, if it came from China, it would be an oriental. 
And if China is Oriental, what is Occidental? Not a big collision. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Max, you've made a lot of progress at Harvard. You're telling me the puff says my IQ is nil. And if I continue with college, it'll be null. Ain't every fellow can leave college with a nil and a null. Mm, uh, <clears throat> let's get back to Elmer. Confidentially, Elmer's my pet mosquito. I raised it from a pup. He comes from a royal family. What did he do, bite the Prince of Wales? Don't be a dope, you dope. Elmer don't bother with princes. He waited until he became king. Well, uh, how did you happen to come by him? Oh, just by accident. Then when I got to know him, I realized we was cousins. Cousins? You mean you're related? Well, we wasn't at first. We were just good friends. Then later on, he forgot that I was his benefactor, and he put me on a Ford. And from then on, we became blood relations. Oh. Uh, say, Tom, you recall we were doing some research on the planetary theory of the insect, uh, reading something about the type conical instincts of the mosquito? Uh, as I recall his theoretical analogy, the mosquito, on coming in contact with the human body, and in the event of biting into the jugular vein, the brain cells of the human are transferred to the insect? Uh, come to think of it, that is so. Subject of the text is, what makes mortal imbecile? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You mean that if a mosquito bites a guy, it's like a blood transcussion? Elmer, I'm sorry I gotta do it. I gotta disrelate you. Oh, why did you do that, Maxie? Do you know what'll happen to Elmer? What? He'll fly back to the swamps. So what? He'll be amongst his friends. Mm, for a minute, yes. But then, evolution. What do you mean? Maxie, don't tell me you haven't taken up the study of evolution. You've heard of Darwin's theory that man comes from monkey? You mean my old man was an ape? Everything comes from something. Caterpillars, butterflies. Lizards, alligators. Mosquitoes? Fish. You mean maybe Elmer might become a fish? Could be. Holy mackerel. Hey, Maxie, where are you going? I'm going fishing for Elmer. Uh, where are you going fishing for him? Well, I always go fishing out west. What part of the west? In the east. Oh, out west in the east? Yeah, near the Sandwich Islands. Hey, now, wait a minute. What kind of fish do you catch in the Sandwich Islands? Well, a certain kind of fish called the Australian pastrami. Australian pastrami? Oh, you've heard of the Australian pastrami, Tommy. It's a uh, species of the Hungarian goulash gender. Hey, you were there too. Funny, I never saw you there. Oh, I haven't been there for years. Uh, when were you there? Two years, one summer. Two years, one summer. There's only one summer a year. That's the winter I was there. Winter? You said summer before. The summer before I wasn't there. Oh. You can only catch Australian pastrami at a certain time of the year. What time is that? 2.30. 2.30? What time of the year? Mmm, springtime near Christmas. Mmm. Tell me, how do you catch this unusual fish? Oh, it's very, very simple. You get up at 4 o'clock in the morning some evening, you see, and you get a hook and line, and you're sitting on the porch looking out the back window. Now, as you're sitting on the roof... Now, now, wait a minute. How's the fish get up on the roof? Oh, that's your half the fish. I know. Now, you're sitting on the roof, and you notice the fish coming, and you hide, you see? How? Oh, very, very simple. You lie on your tummy, and you cover yourself up with your back, and the fish comes over, and he, he, he thinks you're playing possums, and he starts doing a conger. Now, as he does the conger, you slide right down to the sidewalk. I suppose you have to do that very quietly. All you got to do is quiet, because if the fish hears you, he just gets up and walks away. But that's the Australian pastrami. Now, you take the game fish, the Ifidiffle fish. That's different. Oh, the Australian pastrami is now in oblivion, and there's an Ifidiff fish. Oh, yeah, you've heard of the Ifidiff, Tommy. It's a very rare species. Oh, I'm sorry. I must plead English. I've never heard of it. What manner of fish is that? Just a minute. I'll show you. So I'll tell you, it's a son of a fish that swims backwards. Oh. Why does it swim backwards? Oh, I guess to keep the water out of their eyes. <laughs> Must be very difficult catching a fish like that. Oh, that it is, that it is. To catch an ifle diffle fish, you've got to have a hard shell fang for it. Mm, that's the bait, I suppose. Yes, that's the bait, but, but they, they don't go for that kind of bait, you no. see. You see, they just knock their heads against the hard shell fang for it, and in that way, they knock their brains out. Yeah, then I suppose ready for the oven. Sure, but, but first you've got to cook them. Cook them? That's right, cook them. You can bark them, but... It's better to cook them. Mm, and how do you cook them? Here, come here, I'll show you. See, first you take the breath out and you lie it aside, you see? Mm. Why do you take the breath out and lay it aside? Oh, that's for the gravy, you see? You lie it down, and then you get some nails and you hammer it down, you see? It gets the board, then you take some salt and you put it all over, you see? Then you get some pepper and put it all over, you see? 
Then they can take ketchup and they put it on there. Where's the ketchup? Here's the ketchup. You take the ketchup and they put it all over, you see? And then you get some nice, clean mud and put it all over. Clean mud? That's right, clean mud. And then they put it into an oven, burnt with charcoal, and they let the fish there for eight years. Eight years? That's right. And after eight years, you take it out of the oven and you put it down, see? And then you rip out the nails, you rip off the fish, you throw away the boards, and you eat the charcoal. And believe me when I say, it's the finest thing you ever ate in your life. Hey, is he kidding? Well, so long, fellas. I gotta go fishing for Almer. Hey, Maxie, just a minute. I don't think you'll have to go fishing for Almer. What do you mean? I think I see Elmer. Really? Stand still. I'll get him for you. Gee, that's swell. Oh, gosh, that's swell. Fellas, this ain't Elmer. We're smart. He's a jerk. Yeah. Professor Elvin. Professor Elvin. Uh, yes, what is it, Professor T? Uh, well, why, it's this. This specimen of yours. This freak of nature. This Rosenblum. Oh, yes, he'll be here soon. Won't you sit down and wait? No, I don't want to sit down and wait. I've had him on my hands and in my hair all morning. He's disrupting my entire mathematics class. Oh, teacher, don't get excited. Who's excited? I'm not excited. Don't let Rosenblum disturb you. Nobody expects you to teach him anything. I doubt whether he knows even the simplest multiplication table, let alone advanced calculus. Oh, yes, he does. He knows everything. He merely looks at a problem and gives the answer like that. Nonsense. That's what I thought at first. I thought it was a fluke, a mistake. And then I gave him another problem, and another, and another. And you stopped him. Oh, no, he knew the answers like that. That doesn't surprise me. Why not? Because, gentlemen, Mr. Rosenblum is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal? It's the most disconcerting thing that has ever happened to me. Imagine being able to identify the logarithmic series at a glance, without a brain. How does he do it? I don't know, and neither does he. When I ask him how he does it, he merely shrugs his shoulders, gives me a perfectly inane grin, and says, Well, that's what it is, ain't it? What's the diff how I do it, so long as it's right? Oh, good. Hi, Doc. Ah, oh, man. Well, here I am, right on the nose. Hi, Prof. Looks like they caught up with you at last, huh? <laughs> I warned you. Hi, Gramp. Ready for the big show? Yeah. Hey, what do you got here, steam room? Uh, Professor Teeter has just informed us of your brilliancy in mathematics. Do you know uh, trigonometry or calculus? I don't know those fellows. All I know is Cotus, Vestas, and Pantus. Are you quoting mythology? Mythology? Are you listening? I know. Are you quoting mythology? <laughs> now you got me, Gramps. All I know is those arithmetical answers. But I don't know their names or big words. That's what I want you to learn me. We will. But first, we want you to tell us, how have you arrived at the mathematical solutions so accurately? Mm, it just pops up accidentally. Maybe when I was a kid, I was hit on the head with an eighty machine. That adds up, don't it? For instance, if you give an eighty machine a arithmetical example, what do you do? You punch the key 65, 72, and 96, then you punch the key for your answer. Does the machine stop to think? Nah, the answer comes out extemporaneous. And what do you got? 233. It's supernatural. What did I tell you, gentlemen? You think that's something? When my brother was a kid, he was hit on the head with a geography, and now he travels to strange countries and shows the guides around. Incomprehensible. Hey, that's a big word, too. I bet when you was a kid, you was hit on the head with a dictionary. You must have been hit on the head with a squirrel. I was hit on the head with nothing? You ain't kidding, brother, because nothing comes out. <laughs> According to your theory, Mr. Blooming Rose, uh, Rosenblum, uh, I take it that You've never even studied elementary mathematics. Multiplication. Subtraction. Nah. I got my arithmetical education from counting up the ticket to gate. I don't go by the subtraction or multiplication business. I go by the goes into comes out of system. Comes into comes, comes out, out of system. system. That's right. Two goes into four twice. Six comes out of twelve twice. Or well, speaking in a kind of language, that is when nobody's looking. A hand goes into the cash box and comes out a couple of bucks to the good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but how about the final count-up? Somebody's bound to miss the shortage. Figures don't lie, you know. <laughs> they don't, huh? That's a corny idea. I'll show where you're wrong. How much is six and four? Ten. Oh, no. Five and five is ten, but... Pardon me, Professor. Five and five are ten. Mm. 
Five and five was ten, but I'll share where five and five is eleven. Impossible. How many fingers you got? Ten. All right, count them. One, two, three, four, five, and five are ten. That's right. Now, which would you say is your tenth finger? Oh, the small one, I suppose. Okay, hold your hand up. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, and five is eleven. <laughs> and here's one for you, Gramps. How much is three times three? Or nine, to be sure. Hmm, I knew you'd say that, and I bet you'd bet on it, too. Well, I'm going to show you where you're wrong, that three times two is ten. Here's three plugs here. Come here, count them three times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There, you see, Max, the figures don't lie. They don't, huh? I'll show you where three times three makes ten. Here, follow me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three are ten. <laughs> three times three must be nine. Oh, I hate you. Here, count them yourself. Very well. One, two, three, right. four, five, six, seven, eight. And three is eleven. <laughs> How am I doing, Prof? <laughs> Suppose we postpone these mathematical gymnastics for the moment and get on with the test. Now, Mr. Rosenblum, sit down, please. Is that electric chair? Oh, that's not an electric chair. The, the voltage in those wires is reduced to a minimum of kilowatts. Could be that a minimum of kilocycles could kill a maximum of Rosenblum? Oh. <laughs> not bad, huh? There's no danger of that. Well, look, Prof, in case it's going to hurt, can I have one of those antiseptics? Now, just sit back. Okay, after all, it's only electricity. That's right. Hey, does that go on me? What are you trying to do, give me conclusion of the brain? Well, with this, we get a road map of your mind. Oh, swell. Look, when my mind gets on the road, which leads to my nightclub, we could stop off and get a drink. Hey, you don't have to look at my legs for road maps. My veins look like a road map already. And now, with this final connection, we get our pathological reaction of your mind. Perfect. Oh, you want to see if my mind has got enough path to hold them big words, huh? <laughs> You're getting smart already. It's your Harvard influence at work. Are we ready? Quite, quite. 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 Okay, start the floor show. Uh, Professor McSquigley, you will take care of those taking part in this experiment so that they appear in the proper order. And Mr. Rosenblum, you will make certain that your mind is quite relaxed and concentrate solely on the subjects as presented. My mind is relaxed, but just in case, can I have Novocaine? Oh, that won't be necessary. Now, Maxie, we're going to make this test with the mindometer. The mind o Oh, I know that mind of a matter stuff. Oh, this is quite the reverse. Oh, the reverse. That matter of a mind, huh? That's different. I shall now read part of a summary for the reasons for the decline of the Roman Empire. The evils that beset the Roman Empire over a period of many years weakened it to such an extent that it could not successfully hold off the barbarian invasions. These internal difficulties were due in part to the corrupt policy in the administration of the provinces, which were treated as areas which must pay tribute to Rome rather than as integral parts of the empire. No interest in history. Now, Professor? No, not now. Not now? I shall now test him with some action material. And so the detective rushed through the firing lines while the Tommy guns rattled and shattered the window panes of the gangster's hideout with bombardment. Gee, even the Roman Empire's had Tommy guns in them days. Go ahead, Gramps. Uh, Maxie, we should like you to solve an important problem. Is the proof a species of the plum or the slow? Mm. Is that the $64 question? The prune is not a species. It is definitely a dried plum. Scout with them prunes. I want to get the finish of this Roman Empire's Tommy guns business. He doesn't care for fruit. He doesn't care for fruit. He doesn't care for fruit? He doesn't care for... What am I talking about? Now, Professor. Yes, now. Oh, boy, a fight for it. Give me a bite, will you? Evidently, a dog fancier. Stingy. Thank you, gentlemen. <coughs> Professor Alvin, the girls and I would like you to inspect our costumes for the cavalcade of fashion pageant. Hi, Toots. Say, you should wear a bathing suit all the time. That one's awful, but on you it looks good. 
You look awful pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Show the girls in. And now for the important and final test of the primitive mind. This is primitive. Hey. Ooh. Hey, what do you got on tonight? Like her. Who said you, Yale? Yeah. Oh. Doc, don't leave me alone now. What do you think of it, Professor Alvin? Attractive, almost too attractive, of course. But somewhat too attractive. Oh, boy, not for me. Nowadays, a girl must show her front. Show her front? Ain't you embarrassed? Cycles of yours nearly electrified me. Are you sure, Maxie, that it was the kilowatts that overtook you? Well, I'll admit that harem scarum dancer had something to do with it. Boy, what a girl. I could use her in my nightclub. She's so vicious, and vice versa. You have fan dancers in your nightclub? Yeah, but the one I got's no good. She's too civilized. Either she don't have enough harem to scare him or enough scare him to scare him. <laughs> Mr. Rosenblum. Hey, champ. That's me. Hey, Cramp, come on. I like them on the test, all right? And we're very pleased with it. Swell. I like to have another one like that sometime. That was fun. Maybe I can meet up with that female suit, huh? I'm afraid not. Well, how about the one in the white bathing suit? I'm afraid not, Maxie. Propinquity is not part of the test. Why, grabs. Well, no harm in asking. Well, I'll be seeing you, boys. Goodbye. Evolution's gift to humanity. His tests, reactions, and mental processes are the same as those of millions of people in this country. And we must nurse the voice of the people. You know, Vox Populi. Look what happened. Look what happened with the Never Scratch Phonograph Record Company. Why, when you started testing their new songs on Max D, their record sales jumped sky high. Sky high. That's right. They said I was a perfect guinea pig for records. Didn't they, Gramps? Think of it. A gauge, a human thermometer for 22 million morons in this country. That's right, isn't it? Uh, 23 million, 112. Those were our latest figures. 23 million, 112 morons, and all of them in the market to buy something. If we could only know in advance what they want to buy. That's why I'm here, Professor, and we can know with Maxie here to guide us. The university has no objection to any financial arrangement you may make with Mr. Rosenblum, so long as he remains available to us for our research. Oh, them tests. Oh, I like those. Maxie? My new firm, International Super Test Reaction and Research Company Limited, would like to contract for your test and reaction services. Yeah, but what's in it for the Rosenblum Show Me Company Limited? We'll pay $500 a week. Look, I may be dumb, but I ain't stupid. $500 is a lot of money. I know, it's only half as much as a thousand. Besides, I got a better offer from another company. And they got a smooth salesman, too. Guy sent me a telegram right here. Hot tickets. How now that got there? Here it is here. The Consumers Prognosticating Company Sampling Service, Inc. And they offered me seven fifty. Seven fifty? Yeah, cash on the line. So you see, Mr. Plunkett, if you want to do business with this small line, you have to raise the ante. 
It got me up a tree. Come on, don't be a tight one, Mr. Plunkett. After all, it's only hay, ain't it? Maxie, you drive a hard bargain. But you win by a nose. It's a deal at a thousand dollars a week. You think I should have held out for fifteen hundred? A thousand is the limit. Speak when you spoke or two. Huh? No, always take a profit. Well, okay, say. It's a deal. But not exclusive. Now sign. Sign. How do you spell those, Bloom? Uh, R-O-S-E-N-B-L-O-O-N. <laughs> Thank you. You know I get a big thrill out of being a moron. <laughs> Here it is, baby. A thousand bucks a week. Signed, sealed, and delivered. A thousand dollars? Five thousand loads of milks? Yeah, this is a killer. All I can do is tell us guy how my taste is bent. Do I blow hot? Do I blow cold? What I like and what I don't like? Gee, I'm so happy. I think I'll kiss her for luck. <laughs> Hey, what's the matter with the jackaroo? Mr. Rosenblum, this is our masterpiece. The dreams of years are blended into this exquisite nectar. Shut your eyes, think. Waves kissing the shore of Capri. Moonbeams tripping lightly over the water. In the distance, the sound of sweet, romantic music. Gypsy music. Picture yourself there. Close your eyes, think. Think of the most beautiful woman you have ever known. Alone with you in the moonlight. Listening to the music, the soft murmur of the waves, a vagrant breeze takes a strand of her hair and blows it across your face. <sighs> ah, l'amour exotique. It stinks. to the campus, huh? I bet you never saw a hot spot like this before. No, I can't say that I have, but I've had my moments. Beer gardens and burlesque shows. I lived in the gay 90s, you know. Hey, Slav. Two jiggers of malted milk and one Angus store of chocolate. Old-fashioned. Just imagine me a soda jerker. I wouldn't do this for anybody else but Maxie. I got the best table in the house. Nothing's too good for you, Grant. Here we are, here. Oh, good evening. Bless my soul. Miss Frisbee, what on earth? Oh, Professor, I'll leave immediately. Leave, I should say not. For the first time in 30 years, Miss Frisbee, I'm inclined to think you're a human being. Here, I'm afraid you'll have to move, oh, young man. Certainly, Professor. Miss Frisbee and I are going to discover each other, aren't we? If you say so, Nicotin. <laughs> <laughs> children, children. Oh, Maxie, these just came from the printers. I thought you'd like to see them. What are they? Reports about you, the published results of the tests we've been making with you. Oh, headline stuff, huh? What is it? I don't get it. They're the final facts about you, Maxie. Our investigations are completed. We're through. 
You mean you're finished with me? No more tests? That's right. Harvard has no further need for your services. Well, ain't that just ducky? You're finished with me and you're throwing me out. Well, let me tell you something, Graham. You can't get away with this, see? I kept up my end of the bargain. I did everything you wanted me to do, didn't I? Well, of course no one is dissatisfied. Oh, they ain't, huh? Well, I am. Why, well, Harvard is well pleased with the results of our experiments. These reports will be standard textbooks for years to come, but now the job is over. Oh, no, it ain't over. You got what you want, but what about me? My education. This was supposed to be an even, Stephen chain. I let you get smart on me, and you were supposed to let me smarten upon you. Well, I doubt if even Harvard will ever be able to add anything to what you already know, Maxie. There's nothing further we can teach you. You mean, you mean I'm going to granulate? Will a college diploma and everything? We'll give you a diploma of sorts. I think you've earned it. We well, wanted to say so in the first place. Me, Maxie Rosenblum, with a college diploma. PhD, Doctor of Pistology. He's always in there punching, isn't he? Grabs, I've been thinking. Yes, Maxie? I just figured out a way how I could show my gratitude to Harvard. Oh, that's very commendable of you, Maxie. Yep, I'm going to endow the gent with a special classroom. I'm going to give a chair. You've got all kinds of schools here. Business, laws, medicine, everything but one. And that's what I'm going to start. Well, what kind of a school, Maxie? A school for jerks. Jerks? Jerks? I know a jerk. There were two gentlemen on a motorcycle, and the first Irishman said... Now, don't mind her. She's been fighting too long. Yeah, a place where morons like me can come and prove we don't know nothing. Like I did. And you know what? I'm going to make you the honorary president of all the jerks. That's very unselfish of you, Maxie. Think not that of it, Gramp. Waiter. Yes, sir. May we have serviettes? A what? Serviettes. Sorry, mister, but we only have those Fridays and Saturdays. They're out of season. Hey, Maxie, the floor show. Coming up. The way, folks, you're going to see a great show. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I know you're all waiting for the floor show to get started, but between you and me, I ain't seen it myself. So why should I take a chance and bore you with something that, for all I know, is particulars? Then there's another thing. This picture started out with a cafe scene. You're liable to look up here and say, that's where we came in and walk out on us. So why don't we just call it quits and end the picture right here, huh? You remember the story, it's all about some jerk that wanted to go to Harvard and he's... Hey, what am I talking about? That's me! Well, so long, folks, and thanks for coming.